Good morning and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 22nd of March 2021 and the time has just gone 9.19 GMT. And it's been a, it's been a slightly negative start to the European trading session. Um, the couple of big stories of the past 24 hours, 48 hours has been, um, we've seen a lot of volatility in the Turkish lira. Um, we, we, and initially on, on when, when when the currency markets opened on Sunday night, had a large sell-off in the Turkish lira. That that uh, that has since rebounded. Um, some of the most a large chunk of the gains that were initially lost have been recouped, but there's still a huge um, volatility surrounding it. Uh, this was all sparked by the kind of reasonably abrupt decision to replace the head of the Turkish Central Bank. And with this, that has sparked fears about will there, will there be capital controls, uh, and w w which is why we've seen a lot of volatility in the Turkish lira. With that, uh, in, the, in the kind of session overnight in Asia, there was a kind of a, a push towards or a push towards the Japanese yen, a classic safe haven play, kind of classic example of risk off sentiment. Um, also here in Europe this morning, there's some mild concerns that some banks in Europe might have exposure to Turkey or, 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 or exposure to the Turkish lira, and that is kind of ripple. And, and to a small, to a small extent, that's kind of running through the uh, the euro, the um, the European banking sector. But not overly concerned. We've had situations like this in the forward where where the Turkish lira has gone through a lot of volatility. It's often been in the, it's often from time at those times been the news for a few days, but eventually things have kind of petered out. Um, also, the big, the big story, um, the travel sector, airlines are, are, are very much in the red this morning. Uh, there is, um, there, there's kind of concerns over recovery hopes. Uh, there's, 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 there are fears that, that a number of countries in the EU are, 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 in, are in for another wave of, the, of, a, of COVID-19 cases, but also there's this kind of heightened tension between the, U, the EU and the UK in relation to the AstraZeneca vaccine. There's, there, there's, uh, there are fears that this week that the, the, U, that the European Union might vote in favour of halting uh, um, uh, exports, exports of the of the AstraZeneca vaccine to the UK. That would have, have given quite a obviously knock back, uh, knock back the UK's plans to reopen the economy. So the kind of airline sector has been quite badly hit uh, on, on the back of this. We will have to see how things play out on that uh, on that front, but. Relations between London and Brussels hasn't been, hasn't been great recently, uh, in, in recent weeks and months. So that's going to be probably be the focus of this week's um, this week's um, kind of this this one of the main focuses of this week. Uh, speaking of this week, uh, as I always do, I'll run through the week ahead article and then I go through the major indices, the major currencies, and the major commodities. So the week ahead ar article can be found on our website cmc.com under insights under latest news and analysis. I think going from there, uh, you can click, click on the article here, scroll down. We had full year figures from Kingfisher this morning. Uh, they own the DIY shop B, B and Q. Um, over, group figures were, were, uh, were, were, were well received. Um, full year adjusted profits up uh, over, up 44%. The dividend re was reinstated. DIY companies around the world um, did very well this year, um, basically because of, because of because the government opposed lockdowns forced people to stay at home that essentially prompted people to spend money sprucing up their homes. Adobe Systems will have their first quarter numbers coming out tomorrow. Also tomorrow, GameStop. Um, this company has been uh, in the news a lot in the last couple of months. It's experienced a lot of volatility uh, in late January and into February. It's been, it's been kind of one of the stocks that was being talked a lot about on Reddit. I kind of the horde of retail investors were kind of pushing around the share price of this company. So the update from this is going to be very interesting because essentially, you know, there are a lot of people, there are some people arguing that the current the current share price of the stock grossly overvalues its what is grossly overvalued in comparison with the fundamentals with the state. So the, the first, the fourth quarter numbers are going to be very clutchy very closely, closely watched. That being said about concerns over its high valuation, that hasn't hasn't stopped the share price from going even higher. It has been much higher than its current price. So um, we could continue to see a lot of volatility in that stock. Uh, tomorrow morning, we have UK uh, unemployment numbers. The actual headline unemployment figure itself is, is seems to be kind of less important these days, just because the numbers are being skewed by the furloughs, by the furlough scheme. 
Um, so the kind of claimant count numbers is, is considered to be a better representation uh, of what's actually going on in terms of the UK labour market. On Wednesday, we have the flash service, we have the flash manufacturing and services PMIs for France and Germany. These two countries are the largest economies in the European Union and the Eurozone. Also, what's going to be in focus is how badly their services sectors are holding up because they, they got quite tough lock restrictions in those countries. The manufacturing sectors are doing relatively well, but, but services, which are, which are big components of their overall economy, that's under pressure. Um, also, what's coming out Wednesday is UK CPI. Inflation has been, uh, we talked about it a lot recently, essentially between central banks having ext extremely loose monetary policy, governments have, having very loose fiscal policy. That's been, uh, that, that's, that those policies were, were brought in to support the struggling economies in, in the wake of the lockdowns. But there's a lot of talk and fear that inflation is going to jump. And if inflation continues to kind of increase at a, at a jumps at a very, very high rate, and it feels like inflation is getting out of control, that might prompt central banks to tighten their monetary policy sooner than they, they would like as a way of curbing inflation. So keep an eye out for in, in, um, the, the CPI numbers and what that does to UK guilt yields. Sydney World, the cinema crowd have their full year numbers on Thursday. This is, this is, this is one of the companies uh, which obviously had a brutal time in 2020 because of the lockdowns, but they've managed to see, they've managed to survive this far. And they're a company which stands to benefit should we have, a, should we have um, the UK economy operating uh, with little, little to no restrictions in the next few months. Bear in mind the, the EU, the AstraZeneca vaccine export story because that could push things back a few months in terms of the UK economy and the likes of Sydney World reopening. Darden restaurants over in the US, similar, sto similar story. It's very much a reopening of the economy story. They were clobbered amid the, amid the lockdowns and the, tight, and the tight restrictions, but they've survived so far and if they can continue to kind of cling on, um, and hang in there as it were, they stand to benefit whenever the US economy and US data are kind of fully functioning again. Uh, first half numbers coming off from Smith's Group on Friday morning. Also on Friday, we have UK retail sales for February. Keep in mind that the January figures were brutal. Um, they, they, they declined by over 8%. What are we going to expect? What are we going to see? We're, we're, economists are expecting a rebound of 2.2% for February which will be obviously coming from a low base, but a rise will be welcome nonetheless. And also we have US personal spending uh, on Friday as well. Similar scenario, traders are asking themselves, are Americans going to, be out, going, to, going to be going out and spending money? Because let's face it, that's, what, that's what's going to drive us, um, out of, uh, pull us out of the economic situation that we are in. Um, I, I start off with the major indices, starting off with the FTSE 100. You can see here at the FTSE 100 hit its highest level in about a 10 or 10 or it is about a, 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 an 8, 11 month high, 10 month high was achieved back in January, had a move to the downside and then it's broadly been moving higher since. But notice how in the last few sessions it's been turning over, uh, it's been rolling over ever so slightly. It's still above the 50 day moving average. So that, that's a positive sign. And the 50 moving average comes into play at 6,650. We're currently at 6,685. While we hold above the 50 moving average, it's likely that the wider upward trend of the last few weeks is going to continue. Keep in mind the broader upward trend since November has been quite, quite strong. If it can hold above the 50 moving average, the, 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 um, the near term and the, more, and the longer term um, upper trend remains intact. If you can move on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting the mid-March highs of around 6,822. Beyond that, we could then be looking at targeting the highs of January 2021. This year is January. And if you take out that level there, we could then be looking at heading up towards 6,600. Any move to the downside could find support from this yellow line here, the 100 moving average in a 6,518. And if you have a fairly large move below that, we could then look heading back down towards the lows of early February in, well, just north of 6,300. And 6,300 um, is, is not too far away from the 200 day moving average, this red line here, because that comes into play at 6,281. Turning your attention now to what's going on over in Germany. 
the uh, the German market, the DAX, hit an all-time high at the back end of last week, so that really tells you how strong the sentiment is. And even though things are a bit weaker today, the German market hasn't really moved a whole lot, um, which, which is good going considering what's going on in relation to Turkey, what's going on in relation to the to the uh, EU UK vaccine story, and the possibility of economies uh, remaining in on, under restrictions for longer. So the broader upward trend is still very much intact. All we hold above this blue line here of the 50 to move the average in a 14,056, it's likely that at the wider upper trend is going to continue. Should that be the case, we could be looking at retesting last week's high just north of 14,800. And if we go beyond that, we could then be looking up to 15,000. But what I do want to talk about is the shape of the candle that was created on a Thursday. This candle has the potential to be a, what's called a gravestone doji. Uh, and the dojis represent indecision. Not to say that when a market has an upward trend, a very, in this case, a very strong upward trend for weeks and weeks and months, and then you have a bit of, you have a, have a, have a doji, or what appears to be a doji, not to say the market completely turns over on itself then and there, it just rep represents indecision. And if you apply that a comment, if you think about logically, if you have some indecision after a long bullish period, one of the options is the market turns a bit lower, but it could easily be the case that the market drifts a bit lower, potentially back down toward this zone here, around 14,400, or back toward the 50-day moving average before resuming the wider upward trend. So keep an eye on those areas um, for, for potential areas of support should you move to the downside. Turning our attention to the US with the, with the, the, with the Dow Jones, the Dow Jones racked up an all-time high at the back end of last week. Since then, it's been moving a, a little lower. Uh, we can see here on, on the MACD indicator, the MACD histogram, positive momentum is tapering off. That coincides with a, a decline in the actual uh, price of the Dow Jones. So for the time being, it seems that the kind of the bulls, or the, well, it seems that the bulls are running out of momentum, or you could argue that the bears are, are kind of just about to gain control. If we do kind of drift on lower from here, we could like head back down toward this zone here, the, the lows of early March, in around 31,744, and a move below that could take us back down towards the 50-day moving average, this blue line here, in a 31,458. If though the kind of broad upward trend continues, we could be looking at retesting the um, the recent all-time high north of 33,200. Uh, and then if you go beyond that, we could then be looking up towards 33,300, 400, so on and so forth. Now, turning our attention to what's going on over on the S&P 500. So the S&P 500 also, uh, like the DAX and with the, with the, Dow, with the Dow Jones, racked up an all-time high at the back end of last week. But since then, we have, we have a fairly sizable sell-off on Thursday and also on Friday. Uh, and with that, but notice how even though we've had a pretty brutal sell-off, very bearish candle here, if you look at the body of this of this candle here, the red rectangle is very bearish, um, completely engulfed, you know, it's completely engulfed the body of the previous day's candle, so it's very bearish indeed. Had a, had a lot of declines were posted on Friday, but we today's session, the candle, the, the range has been quite narrow, which could be a sign of the markets figuring out which way to turn. But notice how it's still comfortably above the lows of last week. Uh, and it's still also well above the 50 moving average here, this blue line here, which as you can see acted nicely as support uh, in early March. And if a metric has been of importance in the past, it makes it more likely it'll be of importance in the future. So while we hold above the blue line, the 50 moving average at 3,866, it's likely at the kind of broader upper trend um, will continue. Should that be the case, we can then be looking at heading back up to heading back up towards uh, the all-time high that was set only last week. And if you go beyond that, we could then be looking at targeting 4,000. But even if you do drop below the fifth of the moving average, uh, it wouldn't necessarily negate the, the kind of broader um, the uptrend that, 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 that has been in place for quite some time. Excuse me. Because even if you do drop below the fifth of the moving average, we can then potentially head back down toward this zone here, the water the moving average comes into play at 3,751. And also notice how the lows of early March aren't too far away from that metric. So keep an eye on the, on the entire zone from 3,723 to 3,751. 
turning our attention now to what's going on with currencies. I mentioned about how the Japanese yen has done relatively well because there's uncertainty in relation to what happened with the Turkish lira. The US dollar um, recently has become a very popular safe haven place, so we have seen some moves. We have seen, uh, from time to time, um, money flow into the, into the greenback whenever there's been uncertainty in stock markets. And we take a look at the price action of um, the euro dollar. In January, it hit its highest level. Euro dollar hit its highest level in over, over two and a half years, going on a three-year high. But since then, the market has been trending lower. And we had a multi-month low in, in, uh, at the beginning of the month. It had a few had a few rebounds up towards the 120 level. Didn't quite get there, but it remains below it. And while we remain below the kind of 120 mark, and we also in below the 50 moving average, this blue line here in at one spot 20, 60. While we were in, we we were in below those areas. It's likely that the kind of more recent near-term negative trend uh, is going to continue. And should that be the case, we could look at heading back down towards the well, first off the bat. <coughs> excuse me. The 200 moving average, the red line in at one spot 1847, and a move below that could take us back down towards this area here in at one spot 18. And if you do have a fairly sizable break below one, one spot 18, it could take us down towards the, the lows of early November in around one spot 1745. On the other hand, if you retake 120 and if you retake the 50 day moving average, this blue line here, we could then be looking at retesting the high scene in late February. And then beyond that, we'll be looking up towards the highs of early January, which, as I said, were the highest in over two and a half years. Let's take a look at what's going on with the pound versus the US dollar. <clears throat> Excuse me. So in February, in late February, um, similar scenario of the pound hit its highest level in nearly three years versus the US dollar. Since then, it has come off a bit. No notice how the declines in sterling have been against the US dollar have been far smaller than, than, the, than the, 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 the decline suffered by the euro versus the US dollar. So we're, we're still holding above, we're pretty much sitting on this 50-day moving average, uh, which comes into play, and at one spot, 38.26. While we hold above that metric, it's like the broader upper trend is going to continue. Notice how the 50-day moving average acted nicely as support in both mid-December and also late December. So. The broad rubber trend continues. We could be looking heading back up towards the one spot 40 zone. And then if you go beyond that, we could then be looking heading up towards the multi-year highs that were set in late February in at one spot 42, 41. But even if you do drop below the 50-day moving average, we can see that, that this yellow line here, the one day moving average acted nicely as support back in early November. So if the metric has acted as support in the past, it makes it more likely it'll act as support in the future. But once again, there are no guarantees. And that comes into play, the one the moving average in at one spot, 35.91. One of the issues, I want to come on to um, gold now and commodities, gold and and, uh, and, and oil. Um, the US dollar is traded, well, all commodities, are, if big commodities are traded in, uh, in US dollars, but there's been a particular strong inverse relationship between gold and the US dollar. So um, when recently we've seen strength in, in um, in the US dollar. It's not really a coincidence that we've seen, you know, gold not too long ago, at the beginning of the month was down at a nine month low. Since then, gold has been moving higher. And uh, we can see here a change of negative momentum to positive momentum on the MACD indicator, the MACD histogram, but it hasn't it has to fail to get back up to kind of the 1760 mark. It's failed to get back up towards um, the 50 day moving average. So we could be at a turning point for gold. Should the dollar strengthen and continue to strengthen? We could see gold uh, turn over on itself yet again, head back down towards the lows of late of early March, and then back down towards 1670. And if we go below that, we can then be looking heading back down towards 1600. On the flip side, uh, if we, if if gold does manage to kind of stage a, a strong recovery from here, if you take out 1760, we could be looking heading back up towards the 50-day moving average in at 1792. Notice on a few occasions you can see some consolidation in rather than metric and even it acted as resistance on the 10th of February. So if we take out, if we head back up, if we go beyond the 50 moving average, we could then be like heading up towards 1800 and then beyond that, the next big area to keep an eye for would be the 200 moving average in at 1859. And then lastly, turning our attention to what's going on on the oil market. So the oil market had a pretty brutal sell off last week. 
on Thursday dropped about 7%. Uh, essentially concerns about continued rising stockpiles in the US, worries that, worries that um, the worries that Europe is in for another wave of COVID-19, that's going to potentially knock demand. These all kind of came together and hit the price of oil. But despite the fact that we had a fairly brutal decline on Thursday, had a bit of a rebound on Friday, and the lows that we saw on Thursday have yet to be retested. So we're still off the lows of, of the last, of, the, of, of uh, well above the lows of last week. We're sitting comfortably above this blue line here, the 50 day moving average, which as we saw acted as both resistance and a support uh, a number of months ago. So while we hold above the 50 day moving average in a 62 spot 03, it's likely the broader upward trend is going to continue. Should that be the case, we could be looking at retesting the kind of 68 zone, and then beyond that, we can retesting the the recent all time the recent um, highs that were set in March, and they and they those those were like you know 13 14 month highs that were set uh, at the beginning of March. Um, that's all from this video. Thank you for listening. Have a good training week and good luck.